It's fantastic to be here for many reasons, fantastic location. Uh, very interesting for me to be here in this very period, a moment in which things are happening everywhere in Europe, are happening here, but are happening first of all in uh, uh, Brussels, in the European Union, where this uh, month of June will be an important moment for the future of the European Union. We are two days, three days, four days after the moment in which the European people spoke and the voice of the European people has been very important and will be very important for the future of the European integration. I'm very happy also because of the subject of today and because of the possibility to try to say a few words on how to connect my report, the report on the future of the single market, and the future investments uh, for the European Union in the next five years. It's for me very, very useful and meaningful to say that here in Barcelona with the possibility uh, to connect what we are doing, or what we have to do at the European level with one of the European capitals, one of the European most important, more productive uh, uh, regions of Europe. I think one of the main problems of the European Union until now has been the fact that we were too much centralized and too much centralized maybe in Brussels in the last years. The need to decentralize, the need to have on the ground the possibility to invent new ways and new paths on how uh, to push and to boost investments and the way in which the connections between the ground and Brussels uh, can work is, in my view, one of the most important challenges for the next five years. I can tell you that uh, in my studies when I was a student and the Maastricht Treaty was uh, negotiated, for me one of the most hope uh, uh, inventions of the Maastricht Treaty was the creation of the uh, Regions uh, Committee. The invention of a place where the relationship between regions and development on the ground and Brussels was becoming one of the main issues uh, for the European Union. And I would like to see for the next five years this connection more important than it was in the past. For me, it is crucial also to try to overcome the way in which the European people is looking at Brussels, is seeing what is happening in Brussels. I can tell you that uh, Europe is all our 27 member states. Europe is all our regions. The idea that uh, Europe is Brussels is an idea that uh, uh, we have uh, to overcome and we have to uh, change, I think, for many reasons, and I think also for um, the good of uh, Brussels itself. I, I think that this point is crucial for the future of the European Union. And uh, so the possibility to be here and to discuss about these topics in a, uh, with this CD idea, this approach, being able to connect the ground and uh, the European uh, capital, the main European capital for me, uh, is a fantastic opportunity. I say that also for another reason, and the other reason is the following one. We are at the end of a legislature, and we are at the beginning of a new legislature. And if you give a look to what happened in the last five years, I think we all agree with one uh, idea And the idea is the following one. We had five years in which the European Union, the European institutions, and if I may say the European Commission, because we are here under the initiative of the European Commission too, and I would like to pay tribute to the fantastic work of the European Commission in the last five years. The European Commission, the European institutions were able to react to the worst crisis that we ever uh, experienced. And this capacity to react was something absolutely, if I may say, unexpected in relationship with the uh, challenges that we had, effective and a great message for the future. But we are here now 
thinking that the future of Europe is connected not only to reaction to crisis, but it is connected, and this is the main message I would like to give you here today, this morning, is connected, first of all, to actions, not to reactions. I think we have to build up a new European phase in which actions are more important than reactions. I say that for a very simple reason. When I prepared the report on the future of the single market, of course, for me, the most important part of the job was how to connect what was the single market at the very beginning, 85, 86, and the big um, target of the Europe of 92, and what is the single market today? What are the challenges today? Why achieve the achievements? Where the problems? And I have to say that the single market, when Jacques Delors created the single market, was a single market where plans, actions, long-term perspectives were the framework uh, and the framework that was the reason of the success of the single market. I always have in mind this project of 92, Europe of 92. I have to tell you that my generation uh, is a generation that uh, fall in love with the idea of Europe of 92. Of course, also because Europe of 92 was the period of the Berlin Wall fall and the elimination of borders. And the elimination of borders was uh, really the possibility to experience freedom. And to experience freedom uh, for generations and generations, and of course in Spain it was more and more important, it has been, in my view, something crucial for the future of the European Union. But I had the feeling that then we lost a little bit this sense of plans, this sense of actions. And we started, and it is what is happening uh, also in this period, to react to crisis as the, how we say, uh, mainstream of our activity. And uh, I think there's a problem when politics is obliged to react to crisis rather than thinking to the future. And it is, in my view, one of the main issues of the single market and of the future of the European Union. What does it mean acting instead of reacting? Why we have in the next five years to build up great projects with the idea to act with the same spirit of the founders of the single market. Not only Jacques Delors. Jacques Delors was the main architect of the single market as president of the commission, but I had, I was lucky, I'm, I'm very lucky because I had the possibility uh, to be with Jacques Delors many times in the last eight years, where he was alone in his house in Paris, very old, he died uh, in, uh, at 98 last December, as we all know. And he was looking at was, what was happening. I remember, always remember the fact that he decided to took once uh, a public position in the last 10 years because he respected the fact that it was not his time and uh, he was an observer, but he took a uh, public voice one, once in these last 10 years. It, it was March uh, 20, you can find easily. Because March 20, we were in a moment, a dramatic moment. Uh, we are here in a hospital too, so it was a dramatic moment in which healthcare uh, exploded and with the worst crisis ever in our lives, and the single market collapsed too. We remember very well what happened in the first weeks. Borders again, borders in our mind, on the ground, and decisions. I remember always the voice of the Prime Minister of Luxembourg. Luxembourg is a country full of borders, uh, with borders with great countries. 
crying in an interview and saying that you are closing the borders, you are killing my people. Because closing borders at that time meant killing people. No possibility for nurses to uh, cross the borders, to work on one. And the voice of Jacques Delors exactly in that moment started saying, the virus is back. And of course it was not talking about COVID. The virus was the virus of nationalism and the idea to have borders as the way uh, to work in our continent. And the idea to say we have to work without borders, with a single market of cooperation among all of us, was the great message that he gave. And it is not by chance, I think, that some days after Macron and Merkel met and they invented the uh, next the plan for next generation EU, I have to tell you, after uh, a known paper that was presented by the Spanish government some uh, weeks before. And uh, the voice of Jacques Delors at that time was, in my view, very important also for the possibility to clearly say that the single market is under threat and it is underperforming. And this is why my message today is to try to connect your reflection on future investments with the single market. And I would like to tell you why I worked on a report that was a report where my big message, first of all, to the European leaders is to say that the world of today is different from the world of yesterday. When the single market was created in 89, in 85, sorry, in 85, uh, when the project of 92 was launched by uh, Jacques Delors and the other leaders, I was mentioning Delors, but I don't want to forget the fact that Delors was able to do what he did because of a European Council supporting him. Mitterrand, Kohl, Gonzalez, uh, Andreotti, uh, and the other leaders, they were supporting uh, him and they were giving him the political support. And the big message uh, is exactly the comparison with 85. I just tell you one figure that is the most important one. When the single market was created, China and India together were 4% of the world economy. And today, China and India together are 25% of the world economy. We never experienced such a spectacular change in the world economy. And this change from 4 to 25 has one consequence, and the consequence is for us, of course. We all reduced our place at world level, all the European countries and the European Union uh, as a whole. What is the consequence? The consequence is that then on some issues where at that time the leaders and the European countries told the law, it is our business, it is not your business. So the single market is for some topics, but not for all uh, the economy. They took three plus one subject and they decided to put aside this three plus one subject, and these three plus one subject were telecom, energy, and financial services, plus defense, but defense was out by definition because of the treaties. Today we are changing this approach on defense and single market because of what is happening. But the key point is that the three main subjects, so energy, telecom, and financial services, were national, and the decision was to keep them national, not to integrate them. The consequence is that we are no more competitive at world level on these three main subjects. If you take the three, the dimension of our companies, the competitiveness of Europe in these three, Europe is lagging behind, is dramatically lagging behind on the three. Uh, the all figures are telling us that in the last 10 years, the comparison with the US is a comparison where they are running and we are just working. And uh, probably the main topic is uh, on financial services. 
And I would like to focus just one moment because it is part also of your reflection. Without financial services integrated and well performing, there's no investments at all. Investments can be successful only if there's a good mix between private and public. It's impossible to think today to have only public investments. And the possibility to have a good mix is related to have well-working financial services and well-working and in integrated financial market. And it was until now um, uh, not a success for many reasons. First reason was the fact that, of course, it was not integrated. Uh, so in the last years, we had 27, and we have still 27 um, uh, capital markets. Each country with its own capital market, its own stock exchange, its own authority, supervisory authority, uh, combining the openness and the lack of scale. Because on the financial markets, we don't have a single point of entry, so a non-European financial products can enter everywhere in Europe and can circulate everywhere in Europe. And of course, it's not, um, uh, it has many, many consequences on aspects that are related also to bad products or to money laundering and many other aspects. And at the same time, the fragmentation in 27 markets, 27 authorities, is creating a lack of scale. And the consequence of that is the fact that even our savings are in large part flying to the US because the US market in the same time became uh, more integrated, uh, more innovative, uh, of course, more profitable. And capitals are going where they can have profit. So we are losing our own savings. They are going there because of the fragmentation of the market. The need today to integrate the financial markets is fundamental, first of all, to stop this exodus and to start attracting. That is not the case today. Today we are not able to attract capitals from out of Europe in terms of, first of all, savings and investments at the level of what the US are doing or at the level of uh, new countries are doing. When I say the world of today is so different in comparison with 85, I remember what the Lord told me once, saying, in 85, it was easy for a very simple reason. There was no alternative to invest in Europe and to stay in Europe. The world in 85 had as alternatives the US, Canada, Japan, no more other alternatives. So what is today changing is that many other systems at world level are becoming very attractive in terms of, first of all, how simple is investing. I can tell you one story, one episode. When I presented the report at the European Council uh, April 18th, a report, as you know, that has a very Catalan and very Barcelona uh, title, Mescon Club is no more different from uh, much more than a market. Uh, when I presented to the European Council the uh, report, I, the day after, uh, I decided to go to the US and to present the single market report uh, to a US audience. Because I think the first market that we have to try to attract uh, capitals is there. And I had a reaction of some of the businessmen I met at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in D.C. Uh, on one proposal I put in the report, that is the 28th regime, just a, a parenthesis on that, the 28th regime is the proposal to say, today, one of the reasons why it's so complicated to invest in Europe is the complexity of Europe. The, the, the same American businessman told me, but how is possible to invest in your uh, European Union? We, you ask us to love Europe, 
to invest in Europe. You have 24 languages, you have 27 legal systems, you have 27 fiscal systems. For someone coming from abroad, it's a mess investing in Europe. And this is why the idea of the 28th regime, what is the 28th regime? It's the creation of a 28th uh, state at the European level, a virtual state, not Catalonia, uh, it's a, a 28th virtual state. Uh, and this 28th virtual state with his own legal system, and a legal system that can work everywhere in Europe. So you, as entrepreneur, as investor in Europe or out of Europe, you can choose this virtual state legal system, and choosing this one, you can avoid to change legal system every country you visit or in every country you have to invest. So the idea to create a sort of passepartout, and I can tell you that the reaction from the American audience was enthusiastic to this point, saying that finally you understood that you have to be simple if you are not simple, it's, it's a problem because you, there are so many alternatives in the world of countries that are attracting in a simple way and where making investments is easier. Uh, easier because of uh, the way in which they work with public administration and, and for other, as, uh, uh, other important aspects. So this point about the financial services integration, I would like to, to focus my intervention on that and on the relationship with investments. If we are not able to integrate our financial services, uh, the scale of the investments is not at the level of what we need. And the scale of the investments today is decided. I can tell you that in the journey I had around Europe in the last eight months, I visited 20 to 27 countries uh, from September to April, to listen, to understand, to have ideas, to have proposals, and to try to check also my ideas. I visited Barcelona too. I remember last November a fantastic and very useful for me meeting organized by La Vanguardia and uh, Fomente Trabal uh, uh, at the uh, Fomente Tremai uh, headquarter, meeting part of the um, uh, Catalan uh, um, economic uh, milieu and having ideas, and all these ideas and all the discussions we had at that time were discussions where I immediately understood that the topic of scale and the problem of how to be able uh, to give the opportunity to have investments at higher level came to me meeting young startuppers. I know how uh, Barcelona is a place attracting startuppers. But I heard startuppers in Eindhoven, in Tallinn, in Barcelona, in my own countries, uh, my own country telling me our main dream is to go to the US, is not to stay in Europe. Because in the US, at the end of the day, we find an environment that helps us uh, to scale. We find money to do so. We find money to try and to fail and to try again. And in Europe, failure is a sort of stigma and it's impossible to start again. So I think this is uh, the other key issue. This is why the integration of financial services is part of the report and it is part of the link with investments. I can tell you also on that one point. Um, it's not easy. In a European Union that is more and more political, to have the integration of financial market as one of the main missions. Can you imagine in the last, uh, last week uh, of electoral campaign, a political European leader going to a square full of voters and telling the voters, I promise you we will integrate our financial markets in Europe. I can imagine the reaction of the people, uh, the idea of a proposal like that, it is okay. It's good for bankers, not good for me. Because the feeling is that finance is not for the people, is not for investments that are, can be able to give people uh, the possibility to uh, stay in a better shape. And this is the key issue. How to link 
the integration of financial services to the real economy growth and the real economy investments. This is the key issue here. And this is what I would like to uh, also to raise for your reflection today. We need to work in a coalition of uh, actors. First of all, with the EIB. The future of the EIB is crucial. The EIB today, and I think with also the new leadership of Nadia Calvino, can be an actor, a fundamental actor for investments at the European level. The same is the integration between the EIB and the development banks at national level, that they can play a fundamental role. At the same time, the integration of financial services. In the report, there's a roadmap on that, uh, on how to integrate financial services in the next three years, and how to be able so to attract investments from abroad, and then to be able, with these investments, to, to do what? To uh, be able to recuperate what uh, we didn't do in the last years, and also to be able to, and this is my uh, third point, and maybe the most important for me, and my conclusion too, is the main topic uh, related to innovation. You are here, you are discussing on these topics, and the topic on how to be innovative in our investments, I'm sure, will be part of the entire uh, uh, work that uh, you are trying to do. When the law created the single market, it created the single market of the four freedoms. Goods, capitals, persons, and services. And the single market is the single market of the four freedoms. And we are all, of course, related to these four freedoms. But in reality, this Article 26 of the treaty with the four freedoms has a big limit. The big limit is that the quadripartition of the four freedoms is a quadripartition that speaks very, very 20th century economy. It's not for the 21st century. 21st century is based on the intangible. And services, capitals, persons, and goods are very much tangible. What was the economy in the last century? And this is why we created the single market in 85. This is why I think the need today to add a fifth freedom and to change the single market, adding this fifth freedom that is based on innovation, knowledge, research, data, and being able to have a new framework on that, creating the possibility for the European Union and for all our territories to recuperate and to stop lagging behind the US on that. Uh, my proposal to the President of the Commission is to nominate a Vice President, Executive Vice President, uh, with the fifth freedom as big responsibility. Fifth freedom in terms to say to all uh, the European uh, citizens for the next five years, we have to become the most innovative place in the world. That was not the case until now. And if we think what happened in the last years, uh, we weren't, lag we weren't uh, working on that uh, as uh, we need to do. And this is why I think this topic of the fifth freedom and the possibility to create the links with all the places where the boost to innovation is crucial and the possibility to work also on innovative investments. In the report, you will find a lot of ideas on that. The report is a, how we say, is a toolbox, is a non-ideological um, report, is a toolbox. I wanted to give the European leaders a set of tools and telling the leaders there's no treaty change that is needed to apply these tools. I say that very clearly because we have to be very pragmatic today, and this is my uh, also last uh, suggestion to you. We have to be very pragmatic on that. Uh, if we are pragmatic, I want to be very clear, we are able also to overcome all the discussion about uh, left, right, populist, non-populist, nationalist, 
if we are pragmatic, we are able to focus on what people are needing today. And people need today to be able to have jobs, to have one reason to stay in the place they were born, and uh, with the possibility to relaunch, and relaunching in an innovative way. And in my view, this is today the most important part of our uh, work. I would like really to uh, leave you with the idea that uh, the future investments here and at European level, they need this approach. An approach in which the innovation is the main flagship. I can tell you that uh, on this idea of the fifth freedom I worked, I heard, I discussed, but then I decided to put it as the first chapter of the report. And reading the report, I can also tell you that, tell you that the report is very interesting for many reasons. It's a fantastic tool if you need also to beat the insomnia, because if you <laughs> read the report in some moment of the night, it's uh, absolutely decisive. There are some pages that are page uh, 30 and 31, first of all. Uh, but I can tell you so that the report is a very pragmatic set of tools. So the leaders can take some of these ideas and in a very pragmatic way, discussing with the different countries, the different political uh, ideas, trying to be effective and to implement these ideas. What I would like to say in my conclusion is the following sentence. Inertia today means decline for us, for the European Union. We have to be aware of that. We have to act together, regions, member states, Brussels, public and private, entrepreneurs and workers, is the Delors method. I always remind to myself that the first step of Delors, President of the Commission, was uh, the gathering of entrepreneurs and uh, trade unions at Val Duchesse Summit, four weeks after starting his job. It was the day in which he gave a great message to all uh, the European uh, leaders and European people, saying that Europe, we are Europe, and we have to work together. And I hope the spirit of the Lord can be also the spirit of uh, today's conversation here. Thank you so much. <laughs>